All right, we're here with Dr. Muscle Fix and uh, AKA Dr. Nick. How do, you, how do you say your name just so we can hear it? So the true name is Nikola Kuzminovsky, uh, Macedonian, but American version is Dr. Nick Kuz. That's dope. Dr. Nick Kuz, also Dr. Muscle Fix. And uh, today I'm excited about this conversation because uh, uh, the two parts, you, uh, when we first start, start talking is about cupping. And then um, as we were talking before the show, you were referencing Eastern treatment for Western athletes, which I personally find very fascinating. There was, uh, for me, digging into a lot of more of the Eastern philosophy and Eastern uh, medicine uh, has been uh, huge, has had a huge impact on me in a really positive way. Um, a lot of layers there, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to have you on so we can talk about some of these Eastern treatments that are, are really old, but also, uh, to an athlete that hasn't had the exposure to it could be groundbreaking. Uh, and so I know that people are, uh, have been witnessing or they've had the experience of cupping or they've seen somebody that has all those round, uh, marks on them, uh, after they go see a massage therapist or something. So, uh, you know, a lot of people just say, Oh, you should be cupping or, uh, dude, you should do check out the cupping. It's the best. Um, and I've even played around with cupping myself now. Uh, so, but I don't know, I don't know anything. So like when I say I've been playing around with it, it's just, I'm not afraid of it. I actually don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so ladies, if I, if I invite you over for a cupping session, you know, <laughs> right, there's a disclaimer here. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how tell, tell us about cupping. Oh, well, let's do this first. Let's, let's get a quick background on you. Uh, what, uh, what qualifies you to be having this conversation? Why you want to bring cupping, uh, to the conversation? Yeah, so ironically, today as we speak is my 10 years out of good old DPT school. So the traditional um, undergrad uh, schooling education was about 15 years in the making of uh, undergrad and continuing education and um, courses. So I spent a lot of time and money and effort uh, to get to the stage. So uh, undergrad was in Penn State University, uh, Nittany Lions. Uh, Bachelor of Science, um, kind of kinesiology, which is kind of your world where I believe you started as well. Yeah. Um, then at that point, I was the smartest bartender for about five years, uh, waiter in the world. Um, so I had my good old Penn State degree and did nothing for me. Um, the training route, the coaching route, uh, financially, unfortunately, didn't pan out. So I had to do something. And what else better to do to become a doctor? <laughs> so I was like, cool, uh, I would be doing personal training. Um, with physical therapy, and I get to call myself a doctor. So that was kind of uh, intriguing. So at the time, about 10 years ago, all the master's level degrees turned into a doctorate. And that doesn't mean really shit. Um, excuse my French, um, but I think we were okay to curse, right? You can say whatever you want. Perfect. So um, yeah, so again, it's just a really fancy piece of paper. I uh, went, got my doctorate, qualifies and allows me to um, touch people and work on people. Um, so doing it for about 10 years with these two things, um, was not effective. And these two things were breaking down very quickly, um, coming up on 37, which is, I think we're about the same age yeah. and I was like, shit, my career is over. Um, like I can't do this anymore. I'm fucking burnt out. I'm sick of it. It's boring. Um, you know, it was really just an eye opener. So long story short, um, two years ago, I got certified in this good old puppy, which is called factor. Um, the acronym stands for function and kinetic treatment while rehabbing. And the beauty, again, where your world and your audience would appreciate this technique and strategy um, was designed by two chiropractors who one of them being a retired U.S. Olympic power athlete, power lifter. Um, so they were injured to say the least and fucked up to say the least. Yeah. Right? Some of the highest level athletes need this the most, um, hence Chinese treatment to Western athletes. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that and they, they imagine that at, like the best athletes are finely tuned machines that don't have anything going on. But every high level athlete I've talked to is 
moving through injury all the time. You if you plan on getting to even a college level, let alone the pinnacle of sports, if you're not going to, if you're going to be a pussy, then you're, the athlete athletics is not for you. <laughs> Don't even sign up for like Kiwi soccer, let alone like college level, let alone professional. A yeah. real athlete have real injuries. So again, the genius of these two partners, um, Dr. Tom Hyde and Dr. Greg Dorr, who I trained with actually, I had the pleasure and like honor uh, to train with them when I got certified in this. They do everything with this treatment under function, provoking pain, and going up and down the chain. So if you tell me, hey, Dr. Nick, my shoulder hurts when I do this, I'm going to say, hey, Mike, do that. And we do your treatment actively and interactively to reignite blood flow. So why does cupping work? Why does training work? Why does medicine work? Why does surgery work? Blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. Our body will and can heal naturally, holistically. Again, as a physical therapist, when it was the smartest bartender to go to medical school, to go to chiropractic, what did I truly at the end of the day believe? And it's the power of our body. So my job is to get the right nutrients, the right blood flow to these areas. And these things weren't doing it. Um, so now the tools of the trade, again, like doing a podcast without a freaking computer. I mean, come on, we've got to use tools and technology. So this is today's modern day version of Gua Sha. Gua Sha, again, you probably know, but a lot of people don't because even myself, I've recently learned about it. The Chinese have been doing this stuff, including cupping for thousands of years all around the world because most of the world doesn't have the luxury of a doctor, let alone medicine. So how the hell they had injuries um, and they had problems way back when bulging disc, herniated disc, shoulder pain, but they still need to go catch that leopard to survive. So again, brilliance of it and the creativity, they were scraping and doing techniques with animal horns, um, fire cupping again, looks cool, kind of sexy. It's the same shit. So cupping is reverse pressure massage. So first, what I do again is I scrape and break up the deep what, tissue. I just want to say this. This blows my mind of like thinking about humans developing over time uh, that we help maintain each other. It's like, ah, oh, like, uh, you know, rewind 5,000 years ago and someone's got a thing going on and someone's like, oh, I can help work that out or looking for different ways to move it yourself. It's, the, I, I think that uh, treating and maintaining the human body like this is nothing new. Uh, and we don't know, like most people don't know anything about it. That's, that's what you're saying is it's just oh, it's uncommon knowledge uh, yeah. um, amongst the majority. But to a few, it's, it, these are just tools of the trade. Exactly. It's so old, but yet so new, again, to the Western athletes. In our country... Unfortunately, again, let's not even go down that rabbit hole. Um, if you cure somebody and if I truly fix you with these natural, holistic, alternative medicines, God forbid we say that, um, you are a quackery, snake oil, and they will shut you down, period. Um, but again, this is more musculoskeletal type of treatment. Um, right. But again, believe it or not, as I study this more, I've seen it for pulmonary bronchitis, um, side effect issues work from GI reproductive issues work, um, including my wife who had celiacs, all this GI shit went down the whole like traditional medicine route. And we did cupping, some percussion, some scraping and lo and behold, um, celiac symptoms were alleviated. And again, God forbid, should we say uh, cured. <laughs> but again, yeah. these are some of the powers I see every day with my patients, with my members. Um, and that's what's so exciting and why I really took the opportunity. And I want to thank you for giving me this chance to let um, the world and your followers know, because you are bringing an incredible wealth of knowledge. Um, and again, thanks for what you guys do and your team and your business, because it's very, very powerful. And this is what I, as a physical therapist, believe. And I think more and more, let's say, educated people um, are starting to believe and realize that there is ways without surgery without take two of these and call me in a month in a month Mike um, that's yeah. bullshit medicine to me yeah, and yeah. discovering here we are um, there's no magic pill for uh, <laughs> different problems so that's yeah. what I'm learning through you 
as I go through the journey of listening with you and, and again, your different um, interviewers and podcasters, uh, it's been very powerful. Like it's kind of, again, something that was intuitive in me as it is in you. But I was like, wow, this kind of validates um, kind of the power of a lot of this stuff. So um, yeah. again, that's kind of the cupping and the factor um, a little bit about it. Yeah, so the cupping is, it's a reverse pressure. I never heard it, you know, I, when I see it, it makes sense. And then as soon as you su- said that, it was like, it was a whole nother layer opened up to me. I go, oh, I see what's going on here. There's, it's reverse pressure. I was thinking more of like, it was bringing blood flow to the area, which it's definitely doing. But the idea of the, the muscles actually experiencing, maybe something has never experienced before. Here's the thing, the best analogy, again, I'm a more of a visual guy. So think about knots, adhesions, restrictions, and clump of shit, let's say, scar tissue, right? We'll call it for lack of a better way of putting it. So just sitting there in your neck, in your back, in your whatever, scar tissue and adhesions are, are the glue is tightening up. So nobody has perfect posture. Everybody's got scar tissue. And people say, well, what the fuck? I didn't have surgery. Why do I have scar tissue? You cut your finger, scar tissue. You rake your garden wrong. You got scar tissue. So it's our body's natural way of preserving itself and healing itself. So again, a little bit of scar tissue or tightness is okay. You're going to survive. You're going to be okay. You're going to make it. However, it's something you don't have to live with. To me, tightness or restrictions are precursors before there's a bigger problem before you go under the knife. So my job is true, again, God forbid, preventative. Uh, true wellness treatment. So most of my clients, every four to six weeks, like clockwork, they're calling me for their cupping, they're calling me for their scraping, they're calling me for their essential oils, uh, the CBDs, the massage gun, because again, we want to prevent these major catastrophic things. Who's got time to go to the doctor, to go get MRIs, to go get x-rays? For what? Because you can't fix me with a pill anyway. So again, I tell people, I treat you, Mike, Tell me how you're moving. And again, with coaching and as a trainer, you're treating the person in front of you, not their MRI or their x-ray. Most people, if not all of us, including you and I, have bulging, herniated discs, tears. Big deal. Good, you know, gives a shit. As long as it's not causing you pain and impairing you with your job and your function. Again, physical therapist, my world is activities of daily living. So your activities of daily living right now have changed. Um, as a higher level athlete or now retired athlete, now you're more into the kind of wellness, maintenance, yoga movement world. So this treatment can and has to be done from everything from like someone that's never done a sport in their life or picked up a weight to my grandma who's 90, just had a knee replacement. I do this treatment for everybody because again, blood flow, we all have it, right? So we restore and that's why the rejuvenation name came into place because I want to rejuvenate all this old stuff, let's say. Yeah. So whether you had 20 years of knee arthritis or my knee is shot, um, I blew out my back, um, who knows how many times. Um, again, we can actually reverse, believe it or not, um, a lot of those symptoms, 10, 20, 30 years of chronic shit. Chronic is bad. Like everybody's got chronic this, chronic that. Um, yeah. And it's not um, normal to live with it. So that's what's so powerful and exciting about the simplicity of this incredible little thing, literally a piece of glass cupping. Yeah. So I've had the experience of being on the table and it being used during a session. And I, uh, I don't know what's happening, but I'm enjoying it. And when I get off, like uh, it, 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 I feel very charged in a way, relaxed and charged. And uh, my body responds really well to it. Um, and then, uh, last week I was like, Oh, I'm going to try cupping on myself, fire cupping. My buddy breaks out a book with all the like meridians and all that stuff. And you know, if this is bothering me. Then what do I need to cup and all this I started going through the book and I go, Oh, there's a lot in here. This is, this is, there's actually a lot here. Uh, like anything is like on, on the surface cupping may look really simplistic. It's like, Oh yeah, pain. You just put it right here. But right. then start looking at meridians and then, and then I started playing around with it on me and what I was able to do for myself or my friends who are just, 
you know, we're just doing using them casually. It's a completely different experience than when somebody who really knows what they're doing is using the cups. I'm like, oh, there's there's something else happening here. So, a can can we hurt ourselves by uh, misusing the cups on our own? And b uh, what what does this person who's really good at cupping know that the rest of us don't know? Great question. I'll start with B. Nothing that you don't know. You know your body best than me telling you about your body. So you'll know you hit the nail on the head. Hurts here? Hey, doc, put it there. So again, that's what it. Cup, that's it. I don't know why we have this insist on making it so fucking complicated life. You're experiencing that now as you're literally living in simplicity and in nature and the simplicity of it. Keep it simple, stupid, the kiss method, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So it's really that, and it's funny, you know how I got trained in cupping? My wife bought it to me for Christmas as a fucking gag gift. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So 15 years and about a quarter million dollars of education, a gag gift on Christmas morning. Okay. Wow. So I'm like, babe, this is a crock of shit. No one's going to want these stupid things on their back. It looks nasty. And who the hell wants this? So playing around with friends and family, they're like, I don't know what the fuck you did, but you're the best doctor I've ever gone through my life. So recharge, less anxious, less stressed, um, moving better, breathing better. And I'm like, holy shit. They're like, again, I'm... 37 years on this planet like i don't know shit i've been only studying it for 10 years in the grand scheme of things if it's been around for thousands of years and this has gotten nowhere and it's making a huge comeback let's yeah. learn a little bit more so all the meridians and the points yeah cool the physiology and anatomy you have to respect and appreciate but again keep it simple the only time i don't cup somebody um and again check with your doctor right <laughs> always check with your doctor yeah yep. anything and don't try this at home uh, we'll get that out um, but what I foresee with this happening for me to be able to really help people, because I'm limited in my hours and my time that I could spend with people. So I really see this going online with a good old YouTube, um, videos and formats where I can simply literally guide you and do the cupping with you and your experience. Cause now telemedicine, even as a physical therapist, I'm fucking shut down right now. Nobody yeah. wants to be touched by me. Um, I actually have a, handful of clients that are private members, self-pay members that are calling me. I've been tremendously busy right now, actually, since all this. So my trend that I see happening, which you're a trend guy in a pattern is, Hey, you come to me, you're paying out of pocket because sick care or healthcare doesn't pay for sick care. Right? So if right. you value this, this is what the price is. And again, true medicine, you pay out of pocket. It's like with coaching or training. Does my insurance cover it? No, Mike, it doesn't. No. Um, but again, it's what you value. So yep. that's the trend I see happening and noticing where, again, as a physical therapist, I am legally allowed, um, to assess, to diagnose and treat. But again, at the end of the day, who gives a shit what your diagnosis is fancy diagnosis and people get attached to this diagnosis. Again, you're more than a knee problem. You're more than a, a bulging disc. Um, and that's where, Again, I, I think a lot of coaches, trainers, physical therapists, all of us don't realize. And here I am literally coming up on the 10-year mark of out of school. And it's this revelation, um, again, thanks to you and your people you're interviewing that I'm like, wow, man, like it, it's really a, a beautiful thing to unfold here. Um, yeah. But yeah. So with the cupping, again, get to get back to A. Yeah, sure. Uh, good first date. Awesome. Chicks love it. Um, totally good. Yeah. You you get the candle out, you got the oil out, you get the cups out, it. a little bit of fire it. makes it a little spicy. Exactly. <laughs> so if you want to make it really, really sexy and dangerous, go with the fire. The only reason I don't like the fire is I can't control the amount of pressure I do. So yeah. for a guy like you, you cut, well, you would appreciate the torture and the pain of it. Should we say. <laughs> um, so the more, this is what I tell people. Again, this is not for everybody. Some of my clients that are, let's call them athletes. They're not professional athletes, but they're fit. They like to work out. I tell them like training, the more pain you can instill microfibers, micro tear and push through 
that lactic acid, soreness, pain, because we only have one word of pain and we have to differentiate, we have to communicate. Is it good pain or bad pain? So the best analogy is, is oh, so good it hurts. Like, what do you mean, oh, so yeah. good it hurts? Like, this is a therapeutic pain. So we instill pain to get rid of your pain. So it's a controlled trauma to the area. And there is surgeries that are controlled trauma. That's why stem cells work. That's why PRP works. Blood flow and controlled trauma to these areas um, to really cure 20 years of tendonitis, 20 years of golfer's elbow, whatever you want to call it. I've seen it all at this stage. Um, and that's what the beauty and the power of it is. Now, the question again to me is, well, why the hell everybody and their mother is not doing this? Um, I guess for many reasons, even for myself, I was taught by a mentor or by somebody that I was like, oh, just another stupid continuing education course that I have to take, whatever, let's go. And it was game changing. Uh, again, this particular technique, um, you should do a little research on your own, uh, again, called Factor. And this is the game changer. So I apply this concept of treating with the cupping while I provoke your symptoms. So yes, I do want to put you in pain because then I treat it and then I retest you. So you say, hey, Nick, I got pain sitting here in my back, like on my podcast. Cool. Well, do your treatment while you're doing your podcast, yada, yada, yada. And lo and behold, in one session, I guarantee or money back um, that 50% reduction in symptoms or better. Um, and is, if someone's truly lying to me, here's your money back. No problem. It's not a type of person I want to work with. Yeah. Um, but that's basically the responses I get. The problem I'm having with cupping, you want to really want to know? Yeah. Too good, too quick. <laughs> so one or two sessions, they're like, thanks, doc. See you later. Call me a call. I went call you when I need you. And it's great because that's what I want. I don't want you relying on me. I don't want you relying on anything of the hocus pocus I do. And I do teach a lot of my members and followers and clients on how to do the scraping, on how to do the cupping, because at the end of the day, my job is to get you to your max level of function. So for you, Mr. Bledsoe might be different. For Grandma Jones, might be different. Again, I treat the person in front of me, not the numbers. Um, and that's why I really went mobile with this to bring it to people's homes, to their park, to wherever the hell they need me to go, because I need time to educate my client and do it correct. In the clinic, I got three, four, five, six people screaming at me, who's late, who's early, it's my turn. And I'm lucky if I get my visa on you for 10 minutes, let alone an hour of the power of this mm. and the scraping. And later in the show, we'll bring in the percussion gun, which is everybody's favorite, uh, the Hypervolt. Hypervolt. So the, the main reason you like the, the gun that pulls the suction out versus the fire is just being able to control the, the pressure, the more because, precision. Yeah. Especially again on the first day, if you want to have a second date, um, you pull too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> depends on who your date is. So again, uh, keep that in mind. I do, I do well, this could be a really great filter. Like, eh, she's not. She's not going to work. <laughs> it's a great test. It's like if that wasn't a great one, man. So don't worry. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> you'll, you'll know when you find the right one when she can tolerate pumping pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so the beauty of it, which is again just kind of uh, triggers a thought. When you feel the pain, the magic not only happens during the session, but what studies are showing, and unfortunately, there isn't a lot of studies in the West because not enough money in cupping and it's not lucrative enough. So who's going to invest in such a research topic? Um, but the marks tell a story. The darker the marks, the more fucked up the area is. Um, scar tissue, emotional baggage. Um, I see it all the time and I'm like, and they don't even need to tell me. I'm like, don't even tell me where your problem is, Mike. I'm going to, I do like a spine protocol along the whole spine because the central nervous system controls everything. So we work that whole region and you can do the whole spine safely in one session. Um, as a matter of fact, I had two, three clients this morning on my spine protocol. Mm. And, um, the longer the marks last, the more you need treatment. So then you're going to say, okay, bullshit. Call my, you know, call my bullshit, uh, card. And then we'll see 
if I treat you over a course of two times a week or once a week, let's say, let's say it's too expensive, you can't swing it, whatever, right? And we're gonna say, well, how do you know when I'm healed? We're gonna say, day one, look at your marks and your colors, first treatment six. So the way I have it staggered or set up with my um, packages, I do a one and done. Some people are one and done. Cool, I'm cured. See you later, man. I do a four pack, which means I see you once a week for four weeks. Let's say you blow out your ankle or your neck. And then I do my six pack, which is a half a year subscription. So every four weeks, I'm going to come work on you. And again, you don't need to use it. I'm not going to say, hey, Mike, you're due, man. Um, most of the time, most people call me and they're like, hey, I'm due, man. Um, but that's the ultimate idea with this to bring to the world and to all that, not just athletes again, um, but like I said, the whole world, uh, really with the power of this. Um, so the maintenance aspect of it is key. Now, again, are you going to survive without it? Absolutely. Do you need to do it? No. Again, I don't want you to get dependent on anything. Now, the beauty of all this for it to really last, because you mentioned you did it with a massage therapist, nice, relaxing, r and &R, we're on a date. Cool. Nice. Fine. You'll get the same effect. I do it with therapeutic activity and therapeutic exercise, physical therapist, right? Fancy doctor. Um, so I break the tissue. Make you so serious. What's that? You got to make it serious. No, professional. Yeah, exactly. No, but uh, the beauty of it really, again, yeah. what, the, what the nice thing of, again, what I call the real treatment is the concept is really simple. Again, um, you would appreciate this. We're breaking the tissue down and breaking up the fascia and all the blood flow, right? And then as you're training and rehabbing and the power of coaching and exercise and training, you're rebuilding those new layers. Wow. How simple. Um, so again, a lot of trainers you'll see now even sticking around with the hypervolts and the massage guns or these athletes for professional recovery absolutely works. So again, now I'm scraping. I can cup the area while we train. We can do the percussion gun. When you combine those three to this point of my experience, it's like magic. It really is magic. As a matter of fact, a lot of my clients, they call these like magic wands. When I wave the magic wand over the pain area, it disappears. Interesting. So, so you got the, so you got the scraping tool and you have the cupping. Uh, but one of the things I noticed with the cupping that hit me was, so you can, and you were doing it, you're moving it around. Is that, is that like a, a reverse scraping as you're moving it around, it's pulling and, and coming across the edge of the cup? It's totally the so fancy uh, term for it is dynamic cupping. So again, as we yeah. move the cupping, I can actually feel and hear audible pops and releases. And again, not because I have a shoulder injury or whatever or anybody. They're like, oh my God, what the fuck was that? What just popped? Um, like, I don't know. That's just like 20 years of something fucked up in your neck. Um, yeah. But importantly, once it pops, it's like, oh my God, man, like free, like, I can actually move my neck. I actually move my back. So again, those restrictions of scar tissue are strong as shit. Um, there's literally surgeries that manipulate scar tissue under anesthesia that they literally have to go in there surgically. So the best way I explain wash on this is superficial surgery. I actually go that deep. And again, depending on your date, um, the tolerance <laughs> is, is, is the key. So, um, but yeah, like with your buddies and like even just experimenting and doing it on yourself, um, the more you can tolerate, the better. Now, again, can you hurt yourself? Is it important to have a doctorate? I guess the first time or two, because there is acupuncturists that do it. There is massage therapists and massage therapists have a whopping one year of education, maybe, if you're lucky. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, 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 I would say safe. Again, check with your doctor, right? But as a friend, I would tell you, yes, it is safe. It is effective, highly effective. Um, and again, the soreness and the magic and the blood flow happens for five days after treatment. So not just, hey, see you later. And then you sneeze and you blow out your neck in your car. And like, you need to come back to me. Um, for five days, there's increased blood flow. So when you get this type of treatment, because you are so much looser, so much freer, so much more nimble and mobile, um, you do not, do not want to go fucking thousand pound squat. You do not want to do heavy explosive training. Remember this for was designed, created for a high level Olympic athlete. So when those athletes, they get them back quicker. Does that apply to the cupping and the scraping or all yes. of it? 
Yeah, I noticed with the cupping too. Um, again, if you do like restorative yoga, some movements, body flow, cool. You just don't want to be like an asshole CrossFit and go crazy. I'm um, like immediately <laughs> after. Um, and basically, because again, you feel so good. So Timmy, when Timmy comes Dude, to that's, me. For that's first, super common. I've seen people get, you know, in a lot of different situations where there's some type of treatment and they're experiencing that, that rebound. And they go, oh, my God, I feel amazing. Or they feel better than they have in months. Like, I'm going to go charge the mountain. And it, and then, you know, blow out a knee or something. You're like, but well, the you really you had the energy for it, but not the, the mechanics couldn't hold up. Exactly. Because remember, we broke down. That scar tissue might have been holding your knee together for 20 years. Yeah. Maybe that was your new ACL. Maybe that was your new meniscus. So when we break it over the course of treatment, again, remember, physical therapy, like, I tell typically six to eight weeks with this treatment. Now, again, I never, never, ever have shut an athlete down or anybody. They're like, look, I'm going to go fucking work out anyway. So I'm going to say, all right, Mike, I know you are going to be an asshole and go work out anyway. So with that, let's go do a little yoga. Let's go do um, something around your shoulder. Like if you treated your shoulder today, again, no like 50 pound overhead presses. Okay. Um, yeah. Go do the pinges, squats, whatever. Don't train heavy and explosive the area we treated because, again, if you, unless you're getting paid $10 million in the NFL, even then you shouldn't go, but whatever. Um, again, it, the money is not worth it. So like I said, and I've had this happen with patients and clients and try to sue me and tell me like, well, you, Timmy played Friday night football. He did great. His shoulder felt great, but he blew it out. I said, Timmy, I told you, you couldn't play tonight, right? And he's like, yeah, well, you did it to yourself, buddy. So. Yeah. Again, good for business, back for business, but bad for the athlete. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but but how yeah, often so, can you do it? Is it? It sounds like something that should only be done once a month or something. Great question. Um, I've had some acute cases, you know, blown out backs. So I'll see them every day for like till they feel better. Um, that can be two days. That can be seven days. Um, I just don't cup on the marks again or treat on the marks because it is a bruise. It is a trauma. So now we gave our body a chance to reignite healing. So the best analogy, and you'll love this, is uh, it is a control alt delete to the brain for that injured site. Mm. So that's basically the power of it. So when I do the scraping and depending, again, on the pressure that I'm using with the scraping, it's sending a signal, an afferent signal to the brain and brain's going, oh shit, trauma let me send more blood flow. Let me send more healing to that area to reheal faster and quicker. All right. So, like, so, so, so it's, it's having, it's creating something in the nervous system where there's trauma in the nervous system, static on the line, you're scraping it. It's like you're scraping it clear with another control trauma. Um, if that's the case, if you were to do uh, this treatment while uh, taking a, well, using cannabis, or would that diminish, or is that a good thing? How does that? So that's a good thing. Great, great thing. Here we are. You just hit the nail on the head. You took me right to it. CBD I apply topically in essential oils as I do the treatment. So now yeah. I'm getting transdermal. Uh, effects of essential oils and this is the magic maker right here pan away buy it today on amazon go get it um when you get your next date you really want a bagger right here <laughs> so, you got you got beautiful hey, hey folks he's from, he's from jersey he gets a pass <laughs> Sorry. Right. Thanks. I'm You're sorry. Fine. I didn't You're that. fine. You're fine. No, that, that, will, that will trigger some people. Uh, they're just not enlightened enough yet. So what, what the first oil was what? So we belong to a company, my wife and I, it's called young living. We're just members of it. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the Rolex of essential oils. Essential oils are basically plant-based natural oils but very highly therapeutic and effective so basically they range anywhere from like a lavender to a frankincense to good old modern cbd and marijuana cbd basically is marijuana without the hallucinogenic hallucinogenic 
side effects, let's call it, right? Without the yeah. munchies and all that good stuff. So yes, marijuana um, has therapeutic value. CBD, I believe, has a more therapeutic value. So I cup, I scrape, and I massage gun this through your skin, and it penetrates through your skin, and now you're getting a systemic effect because I want to treat the eye of the storm. I don't want to take two of these by mouth and maybe get to my back pain. Yeah. So what else? You had frankincense and what else in there? Uh, frankincense. Lavender is my favorite for aromatherapy. Just the, the smelling, again, of these nice dates and oils. Like the aromatherapy yeah. is very powerful in itself. Um, mm -hmm. and my favorite here is called Panaway. And again, I'm not by any means an expert on any of these essential oils, uh -huh. but just uh -huh. using them and what I've been getting from using it on my kids to my wife. Is that is the Panaway, is that a Young Living blend or is that a specific single plant that I'm just not familiar with? This is probably a blend. A majority of these are blends. For example, they just put like a fancy label on this one. It's called Abundance. So if you put this on, you'll have Abundance. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, uh, I put that in my pants mostly. That's uh, where I put that away. <laughs> yeah, oh, but, so, yeah I, I actually, I travel with about, 35 different oils myself so i'm 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 hip to the uh the essential oils game it's uh, that's what i was curious about yeah just all right so i need to mix my cbd with yeah, uh go. some frankincense maybe some lavender there's all sorts of good stuff out there once you mix so that's my ultimate idea with any of these oils or plants right making and customizing the Mike oil, the Mrs. Jones oil, because we all have different needs, right? The beauty of these, they're natural. So again, um, I guess it's not for everybody, but it is for everybody because they're natural. So you can't quote unquote really hurt somebody with a natural oil. They're essential oils. They're from God. They're from the earth. Um, now yeah, again, I mean, there's still dosages because the, the essential oils are highly concentrated versions of those plants i have heard i mean some people have aversions or allergies to certain plants i i've yet to hear anyone using essential oils that had like this they may have like come out in a rash and it's like yeah just don't use that oil anymore right but it is highly concentrated i mean i i love that i ha carry like rosemary with me and i can just put a drop of that when i'm traveling in a crock pot and all of a sudden i've got rosemary but it was like one drop would be the same as putting five sticks of that thing in there like a, like any medicine let me reverse that a little bit right uh, with medicine um from drinking water to oils it's all about the dosage right yeah so i'm not saying go like take a bath in essential oils but if you <laughs> apply a little bit or you were saying before like can we retreat let's say you blow your back a lot of times i'll go up and down the chain i'll treat into the tight hammies i'll treat into the tight glutes um, we'll do more stretching type of stuff, but yes, absolutely. As far as the treatment is concerned, um, you just don't want to recup on that traumatic area. Yeah. Now, let's say, let's say you have a cupping session and the bruising, like you don't mark up and you're like, wow, Mike, cool, man. No, no bruising, no marking, like you're cured, man. Um, so you can recup that area the next day, or maybe you do a little lighter pressure and you go a little bit more dynamic. You'll find spots in your body as you explore your body. Um, with that. So again, whether you're doing it, it's more the art form for your date or for yourself um, than necessarily the science. Um, as we kind of said before the show started, it's it's really a beautiful traditional art form than necessarily a science. We overcomplicate it. Um, but that's even for myself. I've been doing it for about a year or so now, honestly. And like, I'm like every time on every client, they're like, wow, like just wow. It's like the first expression I get. Um, nice. so again, just to review to, uh, contraindications or do not do on your date is active cancers. You never want to fuck with active cancers. Um, unless my patient's oncologist literally writes a prescription that, um, they clear them to allow me to do that because we never yep. want to promote blood to grow in cancer. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. and number two, from what I understand is lymphedema, which is again, another weird thing you don't want to mess with but most people again um it's a rare thing other than that um from what i've seen or my professional experience um you can treat with pacemaker you could treat with herniated disc uh tendonitis stenosis these are all cool fancy 
medical diagnoses um, that it can be effective for, or just good old effective like tightness. You don't need to have a fancy diagnosis on you to do this um, treatment safely. And again, I have a two and a four-year-old and I do do a little cupping. I do do a little of the scraping. And what I see them and their kids, they can't tell me really and bullshit me. Um, they're like, dad, like they ask for it every night. They're like, I feel more chilled out. They sleep better. Their behavior. I'm like blown away um, about the power of this. So when I see that with my family and my kids, again, super, super cool uh, stuff. Um, and the power of it, again, where I wanted to reach out to you and your team and the podcast. So what what else do we know? We got we got the scraping, we got the cupping, um, using the oils. By the way, one of the things with the oils I, I remember uh, is I found that sometimes uh, less is more when mixed with uh, MCT oil, like fractionated mm. coconut oil. I do the doTERRA stuff. So I like I know that line. I'm not familiar with Young Living, but I I imagine they're very very similar. Do similar. do you guys like mix fractionated coconut oil or anything like that? So the carrier and that actually can improve the deliverability. It's a carrier, um, just like when you do your yeah. teas, right? It's a, the water is a carrier. The oil is a carrier. So whether you're using vegetable oil, coconut oil, um, you name it. The, the actual therapeutic um, effect of this, again, it's like one or two drops to like a handful of coconut oil. Um, and again, even the coconut oil in itself is therapeutic. So when I'm doing the scraping and the moving, I need an emollient to move my instrument, to move my cup, um, to slide and glide, right? To break up those restrictions. So remember, I very rarely with my muscle fix method, which I call, um, I do everything actively weight-bearing and engaged because your problems and your issues don't happen laying on a treatment table. So you yeah. say, hey, Nick, I'm sitting here and my neck hurts like, and I'm working on my computer. I'm saying, all right, don't move. I'm coming over and we're going to work on your neck, working on your computer, and it should go away. So you name it, I call that, the million-dollar thing is the comparable sign. So again, to call my bluff, and say, you know what? When I squat two, three hundred pounds, four hundred pounds, I got pain like right here. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's something there in my lower back, in my neck. I don't know what it is, but it's just something there. Doesn't feel right, right? Doesn't feel right. Everybody always says that. So yeah. then we do the treatment with a little lighter load. And then we're gonna say by the end of the session, Mike, go do your three, four, five, six hundred pound squat and let's retest it. And it should be gone. Again, what I told you before. Too good, too quick. Yeah. So if someone does this treatment, like my, my understanding is, that, okay, this is going to help heal whatever's injured, but also keep in mind you need to be doing exercises so that you're, you don't get in shitty posture. That, that's what's causing it is being in a shitty position. But we have to clear up scar tissue, clear up uh, – pain and create some relief so that you can then get back in that position. So just want right. to point that out. I was like, this is, this is part of the entire solution, not the solution in itself. Right. Hit the nail on the head. Again, you're very great of uh, again, seeing that and just pulling that right out of, even though I didn't say it. So again, the ultimate prescription of my exercises and my stretches as a physical therapist, whether we prescribe yoga or we prescribe certain stretches that because people say, well, okay, cool, man, you fixed me. How long is this going to last? Oh, great question. It can last yeah. as long as you are a good student or a good patient. So if you don't do your homework and your exercises and your stretches, then don't come to me. Don't waste your money. Yeah. Um, that's the way I roll with my treatment, the muscle fix mobile. Anybody else yeah. will tell you, yeah, whatever, who cares? Just come back again. Good for business but not good for you. So ultimately my job is to get you well and send you on your way and take care of the next person, the next Mr. Bloodsoe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find this, I mean, people who are attracted more to Eastern medicine tend to be better about personal maintenance, taking personal responsibility for their health. And there's still, uh, you know, I, I still watch it. I've done it myself where it's like, okay, I'm going to go work with this, this doc for, 
you know, you guys see this Chinese medicine doc for some teas and on a special diet for two, three months. And then it's like, and then after that, I was like, okay, I learned some stuff. I should be eating a little more like this. And then, you know, a few vacations come up, all that. And then six months later, I'm like, fuck, I gotta see that doc again. It's like, yeah. and he's just going to tell me the same exact things. Like, yeah, you went back to the same you patterns of Mike living. They fucked you up in the first place. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So again, it's okay. Cause every once in a while you do need a tune up. You do need to, a kick in the balls to say like, Mike, what the fuck, man? Didn't we discuss this last time? Um, yeah. What the issue was. And I can tell, and they'll, you know, they'll admit, I, I call them like repeat offenders. Again, good for business. I don't care. I'll take care of you. But really, ultimately, if you're not willing to participate, help me help you, basically, is what yeah. I tell people. Um, so again, are you going to do your exercises every day? Who's got time to? It's boring. It's not sexy. It's not fun. So I try to find a fun engage way of doing these exercises stretches whether it be through yoga whether it be through going for a freaking nature walk the key is move 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 so that shit doesn't get built up so this is where yeah. it encompasses again as a trainer as a coach and your world and your followers um where movement is key period i don't give a shit how much you're squatting deadlifting whatever crossfitting it's all great in my eyes physical therapist physical right let's move Period. Yeah. And that argument, that conversation, it's like total bullshit. Like I noticed what a lot of times, again, on a lot of podcasts, including yours, it's like, well, this is better. That's better. Like, dude, you don't know shit. Let's admit to that. Right. And like, let's kind of pull a little bit, like you said, from all these practitioners, um, Chinese medicine, as a coach, as an athlete, as a physical therapist. And then you will find what works for Mr. Mike, not what works for me. Um, yeah, that's the, the ultimate the power of that yeah the, the older i get the more i remember uh, i remember being in college and uh, studying kinesiology and yeah. and then hearing like these uh the recommendation put out like by the american heart association it's like walk 20 minutes drink a glass of water and i remember i remember reading that in my my mid-20s and going so full of shit well, they, it's like it's ter terrible advice people should be doing way more than that um and, and I wasn't walking. Um, I was just hitting the gym. And uh, now that I'm 38, I, uh, I go, well, if I'm not walking, there's a fucking problem. Like, wake up, big glass of water, go for a walk. You know, leave the phone at the house and, and go for a 30 to 60 minute walk. And that's the best thing. That's, I go, the rest of my day is set up. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in great shape. And it's a very... And I, I, I do a lot of other training too, but it's interesting how much I, the older I get, the more conservative I become. I go, yeah, I don't care what you're doing for movement. I want go dance. If, if salsa is your thing on how you're going to get in the movement, because the, what I've come to realize, and it sounds like, you know, we're in the same camp in this is the best movement for you to do is the movement that you're going to keep doing. It has to be interesting to you. And, uh, yeah, I used to sit back and go, if it's not, if it's not checking all these, these movement pattern boxes, then it's no good. And, uh, yeah, it's simply not the case. People, people are wherever they're at and they may or may not ascend up and down a, what you think is a good standard of movement. So, uh, here but, we are yeah, with COVID world and Corona world and like, simplicity of walking where's your fucking gym where's your coach where's your trainer yeah you gotta figure it out for yourself now right so again the simplicity yeah. where we started this even the cupping where it comes full circle is again go for that therapeutic walk take that damn clean fresh air take that clean water and just give your body the simple tools that are free and most effective that we can't even check those damn basic things off and now you're gonna go look for all these like medicines and doctors and <laughs> like, you can't even check off the basics again learning a lot through yeah. you and yeah. your followers is sleep like again that's been game changing game changing um the energy that yeah. i tell you so again when i apply my actual treatment as a clinician as a provider as a doctor those type of clients if they're not doing those basics 
yeah, it may not work as well. And you're not checking off those basics. So again, I'm not the doc for you. And my philosophy and approach is maybe not for you. And again, this is a beautiful country to each his own, right? Go to your ortho, go to your Cairo, go to your acupuncturist. Good for business, good for insurance, um, but not for investing in yourself. Um, and that's where, yeah. like I said, a lot of professional athletes. So even with the cupping, if good old Michael Phelps had cupping and it was something good for him, LeBron James, Steph Curry, you see cupping marks on them. These guys are worth 50, 60, $100 million, man. So they might be onto something. So that's where I was like, oh, shit, if Hollywood and the athletes are doing it, then I got to learn more about this. Yeah, they are ahead. There's uh, it. Uh, you know, you look at the West Coast, it attracts the, the, the French health and fitness crowd. And then, yeah, you've got Hollywood that has got to keep, at least keep looking younger. But that usually involves over over time being younger um, and making those choices. So, yeah, it's it's a good crowd to learn from. That's By the way, sure. looking looking younger, I do uh, cupping for facials as well. All right. Well, is it small cups? Yeah, actually, they're tiny little cups, tiny, tiny. And if you look online, actually, there is um, legitimate stuff out there. And I thought it was a crock of shit. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 I was experimenting. By the way, it. most of the shit... Most of the shit that I use now, I used to think was a crock of shit. Like all the stuff I do now, I'm like, oh, like I got all my oils and then I've got like no more protein powders, but I got like all these different herbs and mushrooms and shit. I'm like, who the fuck am I? I used to think the person that was carrying around all this shit was fucking crazy. And now I'm that guy and I'm, and people are coming to me. And I go, you should check this out. And I'm the crazy one now. Well, Again, you're the enlightened one, really. Again, with time, this all takes time <laughs> and the journey of learning this. So you have your background, your exercise science and your kinesiology. You know, that's just basic bullshit education, if you ask me. Um, that doesn't really prepare us for what we do as coaches, as trainers, as physical therapists. Again, it's 10 a years piece. Into this, but it's, it's a lot. It's a piece and it's a, it's a much smaller piece than, you know, it, it's a much smaller piece piece than I thought it would be. And I think, I think that's what most of us, as we, we get older and get more experience under our, our belt, we realize how small that piece was, even though, I mean, it was absolutely necessary because it was part of our journey, but it's like, Oh, it's like the, the longer we go, the more we're like, Oh, that was just a tiny little piece. There's so much other stuff out there that's made me who I am now. Yeah. But it was funny. So again, a lot of money invested. And when I got this as a gag gift, here we are, the yeah. power of this. <laughs> oh yeah. You whopping. start, you start looking at the dollar. It's uh, yeah. Most of my, most of my education, some expensive lessons too, but they weren't going to a university. They were just going to other people's pockets. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, so the, then, as far as like uh, this is where we kind of touched on before, we were saying with the cupping, um, inexpensive. I think uh, this is like a silicone skin safe one that I like to use, which kind of self suction. So you don't even need the gun. Uh, again, you just suction the cup right on without anything really, just pops on and off. So really simple. And again, you just apply your whatever respective oil and you can leave it on. Like sometimes I'll just walk around the house with this thing just chilling on my shoulder. Um, you don't want to really do it for much more than 10 minutes because 10 minutes of this, or sorry, five minutes of this is equivalent to 30 minutes of deep tissue work. So imagine somebody like digging their knee into your back for 30 minutes. Um, so five minutes to 30 minutes with cupping. So again, on your first day, uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, super important. Um, just want to say that before we, before I forget. Cool. Cool. Make sure I don't destroy my next date. All right. So, <laughs> what uh, what else should we know? Is there anything where, anything that I haven't asked a question I, I should have asked that I, I I just am too naive to 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 do? No. Um. You really kind of took this journey in the right path. It was really great, natural. Um. So I appreciate that as an interviewer. Um. It was it was totally awesome, and I think we hit on really, um, some key essential like powerful things there. Um, the last thing I want to touch on was 
again, so with my treatment or the technique, I call it the muscle fix method. So there's three separate massages I do in the same session. Um, Cause again, that's the power of really good massage. And um, again, the final is, and there's many, many forms of this out there. Um, they're getting more affordable is the good old, this is a knockoff um, of the Hypervolt, um, but I have like five, six different ones of these. And I mean, the my buddy, getting... my buddy hit me with one of those last night. He pulls it out. It's funny that we're talking today because uh, my buddy had cups at his house last week and we screwed around with those. It was the first time I did it to myself. And then last night I'm, I'm watching a documentary and he just whips out this gun. I was like, Brrr. I was like, holy shit, man. And he goes, you want me to stop? And I said, no, keep going. It feels yeah. good. So remember, good hurts. So as an athlete, we'll just say, we'll just keep it as an athlete or someone that re remember, their job is to be ready for the next day of training, for the next gold medal, for the next podcast, whatever, right? Um, so we basically apply this. There's five different tips um, for like the spine. This is my favorite because it's like the softest, the ball. And it vibrates from one to two to 3,000 beats a minute. So the vibration, if you think about, or remember like, if you think about someone doing like, um, I guess traditional Chinese massage, like the chop, 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 this thing is doing that at 3,000 beats a minute, saving this tool and effectively, more importantly, going deep, deep, deep. So again, doing this in that provoking position of where your pain is. So if you guys are just chilling out, watching Netflix, whatever, and you're like, Oh man, what the hell is this thing on my back or my neck or my shoulder? Take this sucker, pop it in there, and just literally let it vibrate. And again, those knots, remember the analogy before, well, studies show it literally just vibrates it flat. So lo and behold, mm. your tightness, your pain, your symptoms are gone. What do you mean? I didn't need Advil or Tylenol or pain pills? Wow. <laughs> so that's how simple. So most, if not all, musculoskeletal tendonitis is um, aches and pains that we all have physical aches and pains um, can be released through these different forms of massage. And yes, again, an acupuncturist can do it. Yes. Your buddy can do it. Um, you want to probably obviously go for your first few sessions to a licensed professional where you can learn um, and a good professional. Um, I think as I am, I think I am. Um, I do educate my clients on how to safely and correctly do this outside of they don't have any contraindications, obviously. Um, yeah. But yeah, absolutely great investment, great tool. It's like a must have with your bag of a, a shisha or whatever you're carrying around there, your mushrooms. <laughs> Put this puppy in here. <laughs> don't leave home without it. And it's great, man. Um, I have, like I said, everything on from my kids, like when friends and family come over, they're like, hey, get me that gun. I'm like, yeah, five bucks. Take it for five minutes. You know, they all love it. So, um, it's a great, great, great tool. Again, it's really promoted and, and branded for professional athletic recovery. So even myself, when I'm training, working out, instead of dicking around, wasting time when I'm resting, I'm massaging myself and, and working those areas out. My next set is ready, more range of motion, get a better squat, get a better workout, get a better pump. The key is if we get a better pump, sell me. I'm, I'm sold. Yeah, so, Arnold said it best. Yeah. Something oh, um, coming. <laughs> it's just got these two things but it's going really, on. Really, really so powerful. Because Arnold, Arnold is very eloquent, and he has a nice way of putting things. But uh, <laughs> you know, the truth of the matter is, the high and the feel-good effect of again good workout, good training, and good massage or deep tissue work is very powerful, and it is to that level potentially, if not better. Um, it, it really is like powerful. And again, why I think a lot of people go into coaching, training, um, or just working out in general. And unfortunately, I notice again now, especially in our country, the lack of movement, the lack of activity, the lack of this co comorbidities, um, we all do it to ourselves. Um, yeah. So the importance of movement and just taking accountability and responsibility for ourselves and doing these things is key, key, key thing. And that's what most important message out of all this for um, the whole country and the whole world to hear. Love it. Thanks for joining us today. Where do people find out more about you? Yeah. So we are strictly, strictly on social media only uh, IG and Facebook. Um, it's at East T O two West 
rejuvenation, bringing Eastern Chinese treatment to good old Western athletes. Um, but that's where we're at. Uh, website's coming. We are a really, really new company. And again, I want to thank you, uh, most importantly, for like inspiring uh, to pull the trigger and make this leap. And uh, I really want to thank you for inviting me um, because it was really a dream come true. I, I thank you for even responding to my DM, let alone giving me the opportunity to be on your show. And um, everybody that's following you, listening to you, um, do it. Do it well and do it times 10, whatever Mike says, because um, I do it myself. I'm a firm believer in um, the power of uh, your podcast is uh, priceless. So thanks again for the good work you do. Thank you, Dr. Nick. All right. We'll be in touch.